Jacob. Hey, congratulations on your short film, See Through. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now it's uh, being showcased right now at the Austin Film Festival uh, this, uh, this, this entire week. So uh, tell us, how, how does it feel uh, for you two uh, gentlemen about being showcased at the Austin Film Festival this year? I mean, I, I'm happy to go first. Um, it's incredible. It's the Austin Film Festival is truly, in, in my opinion, one of, if not the best festival in the country. It is so lovely. It is so smart. There's such a, a sense of community and real sort of uh, uh, togetherness and, and a love of film and, and especially film writing, which is, which is so lovely as a writer to, to get to be a part of. And so it's been an absolute blast. Um, I, I was here a few years ago with the script uh, competition. And so to be back with this film that means so much to us is just, it's an absolute honor. Yeah. I join in every word. I think it's a fantastic festival. I've been following it. Um, I think the work that uh, is showcased at the Aston Film Festival is incredible and I'm honored. Um, and so I'm joining Jacob here. <laughs> that is terrific. Well, let, let's start off with the easy question. Jacob, where, where the idea came from for See Through? Yeah, I mean, the idea actually came from Eyal. Um, uh, he came to me and said, you know, I have a, a deaf friend and I've been talking to her about um, uh, uh, her experience of, of having a child and, and sort of how much more complex that is, uh, uh, than I might have realized. And, and he sort of realized like, oh, like there's a, you know, there's a real story here about sort of the ways that we misunderstand um, what is important to people and the ways that, that, you know, that we, especially I think in the hearing community don't necessarily uh, uh, understand all the complexities and, um, uh, you know, uh, truths about what it, what does it mean to be deaf and the sort of the beauty of, of deaf culture, the richness of deaf culture and the ways in which that that uh, manifests in in ways that that we as members of, uh, you know, the hearing community don't see, don't understand. Um, and so he sort of had this idea and we started going back and forth and just it was an absolute pleasure to collaborate um, on, on a piece that was so important and really bringing in more and more deaf voices and really trying to accurately reflect the experience. And as we did that, we sort of kept moving and forward and forward and, and realizing just how much the film was about communication and about sort of the, the complexities of communication and, and, and the ways in which uh, people choose to communicate or not and how much of the problems with communication are, are by choice um, uh, but also how much they are sort of protecting mechanisms and and what that means to to open up and to challenge ourselves for um, to, to you know be open to what it means to be human which is both a necessary part of being alive and also the hardest part of being alive hey, yeah beautifully huh? put yeah, yeah. How how did you want to approach a film like this? I mean, this this is a this is a, a whole lot different um, than a, you know usual films. Right. Yes, it was a huge challenge, you know. And and me and Jacob, as we were working on this throughout the whole process, we said to ourselves that we want to be truthful to the reality of what it means to be deaf. You know, it wasn't something that we overlooked. It's something that, you know, we really mined and we worked together hand in hand with the deaf community in New York City. And we really, that really like supported us in an amazing way. Um, and I was, I was really interested in, in, in giving a book. I'm always interested in my work to giving, uh, in giving a voice to people who are different uh, because I am different. I find the difference in myself in, in many aspects. I'm not deaf, but it doesn't matter because the human experience, as Jacob said, is the human experience. Um, but I feel like um, I approached it like any other film that I've ever made uh, with tenderness, uh, with sensitivity. Um, and with the question of what it means for these characters to be alive right now under these circumstances. So that is to me 
uh, what I, you know, what I what I saw against my eyes, and the and the sign language was an enhancement. You know, I didn't look at them as deaf people. I looked at them as people who are deaf. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was like the like humanity is humanity. So that, that's something that we really put an emphasis on. Um, and so that's how I, I approached it, I guess. Um, for I, either of you, do, do you both know how to um, sign or did you have to bring a, like a deaf consultant onto a production? So uh, neither me or Jacob know how to sign, but throughout the process we learned. I know a little bit of Israeli sign language, which was my end to the project even before I brought it to Jacob. Um, but we learned as we went and we had a huge body of support from the deaf community in New York City. Uh, so we had um, quite literally an army of interpreters uh, throughout all the process from rehearsal, uh, through uh, pre-production, through shooting, of course, post-production as well. Um, and we learned how to communicate uh, beyond that boundary, which was interesting because that's what the film is about. Uh, so we kind of like incorporated that already in the, uh, uh, you know, in the process of working on it. Yeah, and one of the things that was incredibly important to us was that this, that we get it right, um, you know, and, and, and the culture right, but also the sign right. So we had, you know, we had an amazing uh, uh, deaf executive producer who was, uh, who came in and, and really helped us sort of shape it. Um, and then we had a whole sort of uh, uh, like uh, series of talks with different members of the deaf community. We had round tables where we sat around and sort of worked through things. And then we actually, so, so when I wrote the script, uh, uh, we translated it, it was translated uh, uh, into sign language. And then we went back and we looked at things and we were like, okay, this sentence wouldn't be said in the way that um, uh, uh, a hearing person would, would put the syntax together, a deaf person would put the syntax together differently. And so we actually rewrote parts of the script mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the exact syntax the the choice of even like on the subtitles that everything was really honest and true to uh the people who have this experience um and really treating you know the writing process especially as so much a back and forth Ayal is such an amazing collaborator he's so good at bringing out the best in people and and really making them uh uh want to contribute to something really beautiful um, and it was just such an amazing, I felt so lucky to be a part of that because, you know, as a writer, so often you're writing something and, you know, then it gets put into the, uh, you know, you go into production and, um, that's just it, right. You've made the thing and, and, you know, hopefully you did a good job, but to really have the opportunity to go back and forth with the actors, with members of the community, um, to really help shape the the specificity and the the language was just um really just lovely and 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 such an honor it sounds uh challenging in in so many different ways tell tell us about the uh, restaurant or cafe that you actually used uh for for this production um it's a, it's a, we were looking for a long time for a place that will make sense that this couple would actually go to sit in in the moments after they discovered something like that, right? That was a big hurdle, even in the writing with Jacob, like what would make them go to a coffee shop, right? Because that's how we kind of burst into the story. Uh, they're just there, right? But like, why would they go there if they're undergoing such a, you know, such a big argument between them? And so it had to feel like a neighborhood coffee shop. It had to feel like they're territory right their place so we're looking for something that feels like more um, down to earth more low-key uh, a place that could feel like a home that is not only a place to drink coffee but also has um, uh, places that feel like a living room uh, so then we found Kave, the place that we end up shooting in and it was beautifully decorated already and it did feel like a um, like a living room uh, so that's essentially how, you know, once me and the producer walked in there, it was clear to us that this is the place that they would go, right? So, the, the, you know, we, we were looking for a location through that lens of like, where would they go and feel comfortable to argue? 
Now, one of the things I actually noticed, um, like especially like you were when you were filming through through the window of that coffee shop, um, there were uh, bystanders that were staring at, at the camera. So I, I'm assuming I'm assuming that nobody in the background were actors. They pe people were just unaware of your or of your filming, mm -hmm. or, or or they're good, very good actors that they just wanted to take a look at. Uh, people signing and, and during their conversation it's <laughs> it's a it's a mix actually some of them were actors that were planted there was a gay couple walking by that was important for me to incorporate there and these are two of my very good actor friends that happen to be a gay couple uh, but there are other people that just literally you know we were we were concerned that people will not uh stop and look you know because i wanted them to um so but so it's a mix it's a mix but when I got the idea to this film, it was because I was one of these passerbys and I saw someone signing through a window and it seemed to me like an argument. And I was like, wow, they can talk through windows. That's so amazing. That's a superpower, you know? Um, and also that the fact that, you know, it was so expressive and three-dimensional. And, and, and so the idea for me actually came from being this pass passerby. So it was specifically important for me to portray that in the piece. <laughs> that is terrific. I, so, you know, I, I couldn't even tell if they're like, you know, yelling at each other or, <laughs> or anything like that. But, uh, but that's terrific. Um, tell, let's, let's talk about the cast, uh, Lauren and Douglas. Um, what, was, it, was it difficult to uh, find, you know, the perfect couple? Um, in fact, you found a real life couple to, uh, to portray the uh, uh, main characters in this short film. Yes, and it, it was important for me, but we didn't know if we would be able to get it. But and like you know, but our co-producer Shelley uh, was incredible, and she said to us, "Look, there's this amazing actress. She's just about to explode, uh, and you should be working with her because she's incredible." It was even before *Children of a God* went on Broadway, um, and I went to see her uh, upstate New York uh, in the in the run of the play before it came to Broadway, and. Um, and it felt to me that it's important that it will be an actual couple because a lot of what the film is about is the specific dynamic of this couple that Jacob wrote so beautifully. So I wanted to maintain this texture, uh, this the, the subtlety of the dynamic between these two people. So it, it, it was almost like, you know, when stuff like that happened to me when I work on a film, when something just comes and it comes wrapped already, it, it, there's, there, there's a reason for that. I, I, I really do believe in that. And just, it's just about listening to that reason, you know? And they just, they just came together because Shelley said, look, there's this beautiful deaf couple that are also performers and they're amazing and they should do it together. And I was like, great, that's incredible. And then, you know, like, and it was way easier for me to tap into a couple's dynamics between them because they already had a couple's dynamic, even though we changed, we changed it from the dynamic that like uh, Brian and Jesse has uh, have in the film, but still they had some sort of groundwork, some infrastructure for dynamics. So most of the rehearsals with them actually, we didn't even work on the script. We were just working on what kind of couple is that, you know, like how to um, how to uh, approach them. That is that is great. Good job, Jacob. See your your script is uh, flawless. It made made uh, his job a lot easier. <laughs> I agree. Absolutely agree. Absolutely. All, all right. Well, um, let me uh, wrap things up uh, with you guys. Uh, so after Austin Film Festival, uh, do other audiences have a chance to uh, you know watch watch this film see through? Uh, Jacob, you want to take it? Because I have also an answer, but whatever feels comfortable for you. Yeah, no, I mean, I think the, the, that's certainly the plan. We have um, another festival next week um, uh, in New York. So if you're in New York, we, we'd love to, to have you. And, and I think the plan is to continue to spread this story. Um, you know, being here at the festival and watching the, the reactions has just been incredible. And and watching people sort of see this and uh, uh, have the chance to to be a part of this story, and you know, and and connecting to the audience and and seeing how much it clearly has meant to them has just been an absolute 
um, uh, a pleasure to really get to see sort of how much the audiences are taking to it and how much they seem to really get all this, you know, the, you know, you work so hard on a film and you, you know, we spent so many hours going back and forth about, is this the perfect line or is this the perfect line? And they all did so much amazing work in the editing room, trying to just get everything perfect. Um, and then you get to put it in front of an audience and you just hope that they like get some of that. And, and so it has been just an absolutely amazing experience to watch them get not just some of it but really to really understand it to to have these moments of of connection of uh inspiration um has been so lovely so i think the plan is to to keep to keep spreading the story to keep building towards you know making it as accessible as possible you know this is a story that in some ways is about access, it's about communication, and we want to make it accessible, we want to communicate it, we really want to sort of continue the, the message and the story and the themes of the film in the process of spreading uh, the word about it. Um, Precisely, and I'll just add to that, that the film is already, you know, we're discussing distribution, uh, we're waiting for other festivals to uh, let us know their uh, decision about it. Um, I want to spread this film, uh, I want to, I want people to see it, and not only people uh, who are deaf. It's not, this film is made for both deaf and hearing audiences. Um, I want the, I want people to watch this film uh, because it's about this weird scale between disability or capability. What can we do and what we can't do? Uh, that's what sparked my uh, want to make it. And, and so it's not going to be only a niche film. I've never, we've never made it to become one, you know, it's a film that's supposed to talk to all audiences and question that very basic Thing of what can you do and what you can't to do um, um and so i'm like i'm hoping that it will be available uh and i'm sure it will um in uh in, in festivals that are both disability festivals and non-disability festivals necessarily with not this niche like austin film festivals and more so yeah most excellent yeah jacob hey thank you for uh, carrying this conversation with us uh about your uh, short film, uh, See Through. I hope, I certainly do know that uh, future audiences and current audiences will, will be in delight with this, uh, with this uh, very touching story. Thank you uh, for, for this, appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Thank you, bye. Thank it was you. lovely to talk to you, man. Thanks. Lovely to talk to you, thank you. Bye now.